has not even been buried yet. And I think it's gone away. But where do we do that as a society? I mean, because it's our voracious appetite to bring in ratings. That's what it is. We know it. We know it as a fact. It's done. Um, 17 years. Crazy. Um, I don't think it's going to really hit me. For, for nearly two decades, The Montel Williams Show captivated audiences across the nation with its riveting discussions, heartfelt interviews, and groundbreaking approach to daytime television. Hosted by the charismatic Montel Williams, the show became a cultural phenomenon, offering a platform for diverse voices and tackling a wide array of topics, from social issues to personal struggles. Well, as we look back over the last 30 year, 33 years, and especially in the last four or five years, we can notice that rather than coming together, this nation has been falling. Premiering in 1991, The Montel Williams Show quickly became a staple of daytime television. Its appeal lay in its ability to address real-life issues with authenticity and empathy, resonating deeply with viewers from all walks of life. Unlike traditional talk shows of its time, Montel's show prioritized substance over sensationalism, often delving into topics such as mental health, addiction, relationships, and social justice. Audiences were drawn to the show's honest and open discussions, which often featured guests sharing their personal struggles and triumphs. Montel's unique blend of compassion, intelligence, and wit made him a beloved figure in the television landscape. His genuine empathy for his guests, coupled with his willingness to tackle taboo subjects, earned him the trust and respect of viewers. The Montel Williams Show offered viewers a rare glimpse into the lives of everyday people facing extraordinary challenges. From heartbreaking stories of addiction recovery to inspiring tales of resilience in the face of adversity, the show provided a platform for marginalized voices to be heard. Montel's commitment to shedding light on important social issues, such as domestic violence and racial inequality, set his show apart from its contemporaries. Moreover, Montel's own life experiences added depth and authenticity to the discussions. As a former Marine Corps officer and a person living with multiple sclerosis, he brought a unique perspective to the show, often sharing his own struggles and triumphs with viewers. His openness about his health struggles helped break down stigmas surrounding disability and inspired countless individuals facing similar challenges. Born on July 3, 1956, in Baltimore, Maryland, Montel Bryan Anthony Williams enlisted in the United States Marine Corps after graduating from high school. During his military service, he earned numerous commendations for his leadership and dedication, eventually rising to the rank of lieutenant. After leaving the Marines, Montel pursued a career in broadcasting, working as a radio DJ before transitioning to television. In 1991, Montel's career reached new heights with the premiere of The Montel Williams Show. Over the next 17 years, he would become one of the most recognizable faces on daytime television, earning critical acclaim and a dedicated fan base. However, after an illustrious 17-year run, Montel Williams found himself abruptly ousted from the airwaves following a controversial confrontation with Fox News regarding their news coverage choices. The catalyst for this clash stemmed from Williams' outspoken criticism of Fox's disproportionate coverage of celebrity deaths compared to the sacrifice of military personnel. In the wake of actor Heath Ledger's tragic passing, Williams seized the opportunity to question why media conglomerates like Fox failed to allocate equal attention to the 28 soldiers who had lost their lives in January. My heart goes out to his family, and, but I have been repulsed, honestly, by all the coverage. Yeah. Here's a question I have, watch this. How many people have died in Iraq since January? With 22 years of military service under his belt, Williams' perspective carried weight and authority, making his critique all the more potent. As things got more heated, you could tell the hosts were feeling uneasy, suggesting that something big might happen next. Has not even been buried yet, and I think it's gone way But where do we do that as a society? I mean, Because we, it's our voracious appetite to bring in ratings. That's what it is. We know it. We know it as a fact. Sure enough, when the show came back from a commercial break, Montel was nowhere to be seen, showing that his time on the show was suddenly over. In a move that stunned many observers, just four days after his on-air rebuke of Fox News, several stations owned by the network opted not to renew the Montel Williams show for another season. Many people saw the decision as a way for Fox to strike back, showing how powerful media companies can be in controlling what gets said and stopping people from speaking out. Even renowned psychic Sylvia Brown would have been hard-pressed to foresee such a swift and punitive response. Montel's clash with Fox News didn't just stay on TV, it sparked a big debate about how news media should work and whether everyone should have the right to speak their mind. This was a personal issue for Montel because of his long military service. 
He knew firsthand the struggles and sacrifices of soldiers, and he believed it was crucial to give them the recognition they deserved. One fan actually commented on this saying, well said Montel, people are dying every day, but just because it was someone famous, they get a lot of coverage by the media. It's a disgusting double standard. A second fan added, it's about time someone speaks up about the chronic problem of the media prioritizing celebrity deaths and mishaps over the bigger problems that are plaguing our country right now, the war, recession, high unemployment, etc. While a third fan wrote, Montel really shows you how ignorant and pathetic our society is. Montel really brings to light the important issues of the world that we should spend time and talk about, and not because some famous actor passed away. We spend way too much time talking about the likes of famous actors than the men and women who gave their lives to defend our freedom and country. Thanks Montel for standing up and not being afraid to address what we really should be talking about. In any case, this is not the first controversy that Montel has faced in his career. For context, Williams has also shown his acting chops beyond hosting, with appearances in various TV shows and movies. In the TV series JAG, he played Lieutenant Curtis Rivers, a Navy SEAL, across three episodes. Additionally, he produced and starred in the CBS series Matt Waters in 1996, where he portrayed an ex-Navy SEAL turned inner city high school teacher. His versatility extended to films, where in 1996, he played Lieutenant Colonel Northrup, a USAF nuclear missile silo commander, in the movie The Peacekeeper. In the world of daytime soap operas, Williams made notable appearances. In 2002, he played the judge overseeing Erica Kane's Susan Lucci M. trial in All My Children. He also made a guest appearance as himself in 2003 to promote an episode of his own show, which featured several All My Children stars. Moreover, Williams hosted American Candidate, a political reality show on Showtime in 2004, showcasing his range beyond talk show hosting. He also made guest appearances on shows like The New Adventures of Robin Hood and Guiding Light. In 1993, Williams took on a role in a Perry Mason movie titled The Case of the Telltale Talk Show Host, where he played Boomer Kelly, a former football player caught up in an M mystery. He also lent his voice in 2008 to the political satire film War, Inc., providing the voice of the main character's GPS tracking device counselor. His TV appearances continued into 2019 when he played himself in an episode of the Fox drama The Resident, covering a complex cancer surgery. Behind the scenes, Williams has delved into production and narration. He produced and narrated the documentary film Four Chosen, the documentary, which focuses on the New Jersey Turnpike shooting in 1998 and the ensuing racial profiling case. Additionally, he directed the 1999 film Little Pieces, showcasing his talents behind the camera as well. Aside from his entertainment endeavors, Williams has been involved in advocacy work. He served as a national spokesman for the Partnership for Prescription Assistance, a program helping low-income patients access prescription drugs. However, his advocacy work hasn't been without controversy. In 2007, during an interview about PPA, Williams reacted angrily to a question from a high school intern reporter, threatening her in a later encounter. He later apologized for his behavior. Williams also faced scrutiny for his role as a spokesperson for Money Mutual, a payday lending service. In early 2015, a controversy emerged surrounding Williams' association with the payday lending service. An education activist, Andre Tasha Lame, accused Williams on Twitter of supporting a company that harmed African-American consumers. Williams denied the allegations, stating that Lame's assessment of the loans and their terms was incorrect. The New York State Department of Financial Services investigated the claims, with Benjamin Losky issuing a statement on March 10, stating that there was no finding of a violation of law by Mr. Williams. However, the department did find that Money Mutual used Williams' reputation as a celebrity endorser to market loans to struggling consumers with extremely high interest rates, sometimes exceeding 1,300%. The parent company, Selling Source, was fined $2.1 million in order to cease advertising to New Yorkers. Anyway, something else that has deeply affected Montel's career trajectory is his illness. You see, in 1999, Williams received a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis, a chronic autoimmune disease affecting the nervous system. At first, this former naval intelligence officer chose to hide his pain, but when a tabloid newspaper threatened to print his story, he decided to go public with his health crisis. Montel spoke about his diagnosis on his talk show, but few people knew how much he was suffering. On set, Montel conducted interviews with Poise. Then, during commercial breaks, he says he'd go backstage, sit down and cry because of the pain. 
I would let it go, refocus, come back out and sit down and do another interview with a person, he said. I was doing that every day. For context, an electrical cable can be used to explain how the disease attacks a patient's central nervous system. Imagine that the cable is a nerve going down to your hand. They have cables around them, insulation that protects you so the electricity can go where it's supposed to go. With multiple sclerosis, your immune system attacks that lining, that insulation, and it makes little cracks. As soon as that illness gets a little more aggressive, it actually takes whole chunks of that insulation away. As the nerves become more exposed, patients experience electrical, firing pain throughout their bodies. The nerves send back messages because they're not getting the right kind of input from the brain. During an interview with Oprah about the disease, Montel said, my primary symptom is pain, he said. I've got pain from my shins to my feet, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and it's been there for the last 10 years. It literally feels like you're taking a fork and stabbing me right now. People say, how the devil do you deal with this? You have to get a grip. Montel revealed he's learned psychiatric and psychological techniques to shift focus away from the intense burning sensation. I bundle up the pain and keep it in a box, he said. Put it away, dampen it down over here so I can deal with other things. Montel went on to say that 70% of people with MS have the inability to process high temperatures. For him, it's 85 degrees and above. It's like if your computer gets hot and it starts shorting down, he said. My brain starts shorting down and I literally start losing the ability to move. In his book, Living Well Emotionally, Montel writes about a trip to Nevada that almost had a tragic ending. After being exposed to extreme heat, Montel says he experienced what some call a chest hug, a freezing of the diaphragm. I thought I was having a heart attack, he says. For the next five minutes, I don't know whether or not I need to call 911 or if this was that chest hug thing. That was the worst I'd ever felt it. Thankfully, Montel's wife, Tara, was there to support him. One of the things that's so magical about this journey that I've been on is the fact that I have somebody who's taken this journey 1 million percent with me, and that's Tara, he said. She knows when I'm hurting this way. She has the ability to get her arm under mine and make me look like I'm holding her. Drag me to another place. In any case, despite all the struggles he continues to face, Montel continues to be more than just a television personality. He is a beacon of empathy, resilience, and hope. Through his groundbreaking talk show and tireless advocacy efforts, he has touched the lives of millions and left an indelible mark on the fabric of society. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.